Hi class, welcome back to Medical Documentation and Scribing, and congratulations to making it on class number four. In today's class, we're going to tackle a new section of our chart, the physical exam. Before we go into the physical exam, we're going to go back into our template and do a quick reminder of what we've learned so far. Let's dive right in. In this template, as a reminder, anything that you see in green highlighted text are items that would be automatically imported in from the electronic medical record. So for the purpose of this class, use your imagination and just picture it coming in on its own. Any text that you see that is a triple asterisk, remember we refer to this as a wild card. Once again, when using the electronic medical record, you could use F2 to tab through the chart and jump from the wild card to the next wild card. Anytime that you see a wild card, remember this is a hard stop for your clinician. So they have to address that wild card before they can sign off on the medical chart. So make sure if you leave in that wild card, you mean it and it's something you wanna draw attention to. All right, so we'll jump right down here to our HPI. HPI is short for history of present illness. That history of present illness is gonna encapsulate why the patient is there today. It's going to go into their chief complaint and all the symptoms and the pertinent questions that are affiliated in history affiliated with that chief complaint. The history of present illness is subjective and it's from the perspective of the patient. From that HPI, we're going to pull out the billable elements as well as the review of systems. If you're getting stuck in your HPI on how to structure it or remembering, okay, what are the pertinent details I need to pull out from this long narrative from the patient and include in the medical record, you can use your billable elements as a guiding principle. It's a nice outline, if you will, of the key elements that you need in that HPI. As a reminder, the billable elements are made up of eight billable elements in 12 descriptors. So each line of text represents a billable element. Within each line of text, you could have two descriptors. So let's look at character and quality, for example. If I have both the character and the quality of a symptom, then that's just gonna count for one billable element. Similarly, if I just have one or the other, we can still count for that billable element. Skipping down to our review of systems, review of systems are where we're going to categorize by body system all of the symptoms that are felt by a patient. Again, everything in the review of systems, everything in the billable elements should match up perfectly to the HPI and vice versa. Today, we're going to continue down the chart. We're going to skip over these histories, again, because they're highlighted in that green text, which means it's automatically going to be brought in for us with the electronic medical record, so we're not going to concern ourselves with that. Rather, we're going to focus on the physical exam, and the physical exam is where we're making the big transition from subjective information from the lens of the patient to the objective findings of the provider. Everything that we are going to cover in the physical exam and when you're working on the job as a medical scribe comes directly from the provider and them saying aloud what their findings are. The one exception to this are observable elements, and we're going to cover that in detail. All right, let's jump back over to our lecture slides. The physical exam is our list of signs organized by system that are elicited by the provider as they're examining the patient. So what you're going to see here is after the provider is sitting and listening to the patient's story, their history of present illness, they're going to move on to the physical portion of the encounter, which is the physical exam, where you're going to see the doctor looking in the patient's eyes, their ears, their mouth to look down their throat. You're going to see them palpating on the patient on their stomach and various other parts of the body, depending on why they're presenting there today. As you're working with your physician, they're going to state their findings out loud. So in this regard, when you're doing the physical exam portion of the note, you are very much transcribing exactly what is heard. Um, you're only writing what you hear. There is one big exception to that, the observable elements, which we're going to cover in a, in a couple slides from here. Prior to jumping into how do we successfully document a physical exam, it's important to know why we need to document a physical exam. And so we're back to our handy dandy evaluation and management codes here. So as we've learned with the 
billable elements as well as the review of systems, there's a sliding scale. You can see there is a number of complexities listed before you here. What I want to draw your attention to is this bottom, high complexity eight or more systems. The reason I want to draw your attention to this is we're always aiming for the highest level of billing when appropriate. And also the way that our observable elements are built into our template, essentially if the physician walks into the room, you are able to build to the highest complexity because they are observing eight systems. More on this soon. Meeting the billing requirements. As with all other elements of the chart, if you're not meeting the highest complexity, you should always ask your provider if they would like to cover more information so that you can meet those billing standards. Again, for the purpose of this class though, the vast majority of the cases that we are going to document are going to incorporate the template that uses the observable elements. So you're always gonna hit those eight body systems for the purpose of this class and for the vast majority of physicians that you would work in, work with rather in the emergency department. If your physician is giving you the physical exam and he or she uses a medical term you're unfamiliar with, what should you do? I'll let you read through these options, but let me help paint the picture here. So as a medical scribe, you are seeing every single patient with the provider. You are going room to room with that provider, <clears throat> excuse me, you're their shadow, you're their right hand person, and you are doing all the documentation in real time. Depending on physician preference, they're going to take one of two routes. Most commonly, when you're in the room and they begin doing their physical exam, they're just going to speak their findings out loud. However, they're sometimes in sensitive circumstances or just depending on the provider preference where they may where they may hold off on providing those findings until you are out of the room, in which case they're gonna rapid fire, hey, these are my physical exam findings, and have you jot them down quickly, then put them back into the record when you're back at the computer or when you're between patients at your workstation, okay? So that gives you a idea of the two most common workflows that you're gonna find with a provider and documenting the physical exam portion of their chart. So, Thinking through your options here, the correct answer is B. Now this may seem counterintuitive. The big takeaway I want you to have here is to utilize all of your resources available to you before interrupting or politely asking your physician for clarification. Meaning that when you're working as a medical scribe, you're going to have so many resources available to you. You're gonna have your textbook from this class, your notes, handouts, and our favorite, Dr. Google. So the point here is exhaust your resources, see if you can answer your own question before you say, hey, Dr. So-and-so, uh, you said this, and pronounce the word to the best of your understanding and have them clarify what that term is. The beauty of working as a medical scribe is the longer that you're in the field, the more familiar you get with the language of medicine, just like immersing yourself in any other language know that these terms are going to become second nature to you the longer that you're practicing as a medical scribe. Now, when using the physical exam template, it's like all of the other templates that we've covered so far in medical scribing. You're going to add what's present and add any signs that are absent. Remember that this template's not comprehensive, so it's going to include the majority of the things you're going to encounter, but definitely not everything. You're going to remove contradicting statements. Remember, if there's contradicting statements, this is one of the quickest ways that your physician is going to get frustrated and that they could get penalized for having two different thoughts or ideas in the same medical chart, and this can really impede quality care for the patient down the road. There's a few examples here for you to read through. As with before, remove any symptoms or organ systems that were not discussed. In other words, if something wasn't talked about, take it out. If you don't, it can be considered falsifying information. And number four, if a comment was not made about any element that was examined, assume that it's normal, unless you have suspicion otherwise. So we've talked in previous classes about, I like to have a sit down and with the physician prior to my shift starting, if it's not a physician I've worked with before, 
and make sure that I have a clear idea of their preferences. Um, something that you can add to that list here is with the physical exam because I like to be overly cautious on making sure that we're on the same page and documenting. So when it comes to physical exam, I'll ask the physician, if nothing is noted, can I assume that it's normal? And again, uh, gosh, not again, but 99.9% .9 of the time, this is the understood workflow, but I think it's worth the beginning of the shift making sure you're on the same page. I've mentioned it a couple times now, the observable elements. So what are these mystical observable elements? Well, they're parts of the chart that can remain unless otherwise abnormal, meaning these different body systems and the terminology that you see associated with each one have been very carefully written so that when the physician walks into the room, they are able to identify everything listed out in these eight systems on site. Said differently, they can walk in, look at the patient, and with confidence evaluate that these are normal with, unless they know otherwise. So your takeaway here is that if the physician walks in the room, speaks with the patient, and looks at the patient, these eight observable elements are able to remain in the physical exam. So this is the time to make sure you highlight, star, underline, however you take your notes and make sure that you have these eight observable elements committed to memory and know once again, every time your physician walks in the room to evaluate the patient, even if they don't touch the patient, you're able to keep in these eight observable elements. Okay, I promise with some practice, this is gonna make a lot more sense. Let's jump into one more question. If you're given a rectal exam findings, where in the template would this belong? Oh, I skipped ahead. I gave you a sneak peek on the answer. So what would be helpful is to make sure that you have in another window, the time that we're, anytime we're talking through a template, I would have that template available so you can reference it as we're talking about it during class so that you can actually be looking at what systems are already in that template. So looking at our ABC general template, you'll see that the rectal system is not in the physical exam template. However, in this case, it is completely appropriate to add that finding. This is a time you want to go and reference your textbook and you'll see that it provides up to, if my memory is serving me correctly, 15 different systems that you could have in the physical exam beyond just what's in the template. So the big takeaway here is that, once again, templates are helpful. They give us a good starting point. Um, sometimes they're overkill and they're absolutely not exhaustive. In this case, it does not include the most appropriate system, which would be to create a physical exam system for rectal. All right, for practice this week, I have uploaded into Pilot um, five different examples. So you'll go through, you'll use the template, um, you'll listen to the recording, or I'm sorry, not listen to the recording, but view the video and put in your physical exam findings. Just like what we've done with other practice is go through, do your best, do not look at the answer key until you have completed the exercise, otherwise you're just cheating yourself. Once again, this is uploaded in Pilot for your use. This is not something that you need to submit, it's just for your own benefit. Let's go through an example as a class. Okay, the patient is a 52-year-old male who presents to the ED with abdominal pain. On a physical exam, he appears cachaic and older than stated age. Full body jaundice, which as a reminder, jaundice is yellowing skin, and sclera are icteric. Icteric is essentially just jaundice of the eye. If you're getting wrapped stuck on some of these medical terms, this is a good time to pause, jump to Dr. Google, look at some pictures, read some definitions, and really help solidify these symptoms as you're going. All right, back to the HPI, or rather the physical exam. Breath sounds are clear, but diminished. There is a two over six systolic ejection murmur and distant heart sounds. He has JVD, he has hepagdomedically, and diffuse abdominal tenderness that is worse in the right upper quadrant. There also is an achictic wave. Achictic wave is essentially fluid buildup in the abdominal region. Um, some people may, some 
patients rather may look pregnant because of this buildup. Once again, if you're getting wrapped up or stuck on any of these medical terms, I encourage you to pause the video and go to Dr. Google to help solidify the terminology with some images and reading through some definitions. Back to the physical exam. Two plus pitting edema bilaterally and there is chronic venosis stasis changes of both lower extremities. Whew, that's a mouthful. The nice thing about when you're working on shift is as the physician is going through this physical exam, will it be rapid fire? To a degree, yes, but you will actually see them performing the exam. You'll see what area of the body that they're working on at that time, and it will help solidify categorizing the correct system that they belong in, as opposed to just listening to a paragraph. So this written practice portion is nice to just get familiar with using the template correctly, but where you're really gonna solidify this skill is seeing the video and then matching up the template to the video example. Okay, so jumping from this paragraph form physical exam to highlighting what we need here. So what you'll see is each of the various physical exam findings are then noted at the end on what system they would be categorized in. So take some time to review. Okay, now here is the signs in the correct system in the template. So at first you can see we just add them to the appropriate system of the body. Then on the next slide, I am crossing out any of the contradicting statements Okay, that gives you the content you need for this class. Now jump over to that physical exam practice, watch those practice videos, and get familiar with using the template. If you have any questions at all after referencing that answer key, please do not hesitate to reach out. As far as what is due this week, all you need to do is submit one practice video, which once again will be uploaded in Pilot in this week's folder. The physical exam practice is for your benefit. Thanks so much, guys. Happy studying.